good evening dear church this evening i am gratified to welcome each and every one of you for the sabbath service i am sure this service will be a blessing to each one of us today amongst us we have the president of spicer adventist university pastor ezra slakra the speaker pastor vara prasad the alumni of spicer the faculty staff students ladies and regular church members i welcome each one of you for this special vespers service in which we will be witnessing songs by children the christmas pageant and also a message when apostle mark had written in mark chapter 2 verse 27 and 28 the words of jesus possibly people did not understand the meaning of it but after we have worked for 6 days and on friday evening when it's time for preparation to welcome the sabbath the words of jesus come to our mind which says and he said unto them sabbath was made for man and not man for sabbath and therefore the son of man is the lord of sabbath today we have come together to worship adore glorify and praise none other than the creator of the universe creator of the sabbath jesus christ I welcome each and every one of you and I am sure we will experience blessings this evening on this beautiful evening let's unite our voices in singing the opening song silent night holy night which is printed on your program sheet standing i would like to request the division president and the chairman of spice adventist university pastor lakra to offer the opening prayer shall we bow our heads for prayer a merciful and heavenly father we are so thankful to you this evening after the hectic week and the days as the sun has set in the west and we welcome the sabbath which had we experience after the sunset dear lord we realize this is a holy day you have asked us to observe remember of a creation we remember that you are a great creator sustainer and redeemer this evening with bowed head we are thankful for the son jesus christ who has born in this world we understand there's an importance of your coming we have this christmas day is because of you because you have born in this world who have given us peace who have given us a salvation to humanity 
what a full, wonderful way we observe this evening with a message that we are going to hear from your servant. And we are going to witness the program depicting of Jesus Christ's birth. Dear Lord, we want to submit all the participants and we pray that you would bless them as they perform, as they give us a message through the skit and through the words that they say. We thank you, dear Lord, for the message as Pastor Vara Prasad was going to bring to us. Bless us, we may find joy, peace, happiness to you as we worship together, learn from you. May all be nurtured in their love, dear Lord, and dedicate ourselves as we spend the Sabbath hour. Dear Lord, we pray for each one who have gathered here and those who could not come because of different reasons. If they are sick, dear Lord, we heal them. And for any reason they are not, you love them, dear Lord. And as you love us and take us in your fold this evening with your blessed hand that we are blessed, dear Lord. Forgive our sins and accept our prayer in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I would like to invite our CFO, Mr. M.D. John Moses, to please do the scripture reading. This evening for the scripture reading, we have chosen to read two texts. The first one is from the very famous text, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The second verse we have chosen is from the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 But when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made under the law. May the Lord add a special portion of blessings upon the word that he just read. Good evening and a very happy Sabbath to each of you. I do not see faces this evening, but I'm sure that uh, so many of you have come to worship the Lord this evening. I am asked by the organizers of uh, the weekend program that I should speak on the theme of uh, Christmas. Yes, it is December and the world is celebrating Christmas and we know that at least 2 billion people around the world celebrate Christmas and in our own country at least 25 million participate in a Christmas Christmas celebrations. Since the precise day of Christ's birth is purposefully concealed and uh, it is not known either to Bible or history, some people even consider that uh, celebrating Christmas is going against God's will. But on the other hand, there are others who celebrate Christmas on any day, any convenient day in the month of December. Even those who do not believe in Christmas somehow participate in the celebrations and we know for many in the world today Christmas is simply a day of merrymaking with lots of food and uh, lots of drink. So here we are this evening not asking whether we should celebrate Christmas or not but um, the wise and practical question I believe is how should we celebrate Christmas? When the world remembers the birth of Christ and the symbols of his birth are found almost in every corner of the world. How should we, the ordained people of God, with a commission that we direct every kindred and tongue and people to the Savior, take advantage of the significant time of the year to present Jesus Christ as the Lord of all? And that is the question. When the bright stars, small and large, 
shine from housetops and uh, other high places. When Christian Christmas carols are heard in the streets and Santa Claus and Christmas trees occupy most space in the marketplaces. When companies and automobile and uh, home appliance industries offer attractive uh, discounts all in the name of Christmas, what can we do to impress upon the world today that the man of Christmas is a true source of joy and peace in this world? To simply put, how can we use this once a year occasion as a special part of our consecrated service to our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are not talking about Jesus as if he had begun his life when Mary delivered him 2,000 years ago. But we are talking about Jesus Christ, one who existed with the Father and the Holy Spirit from eternity in the past. And we are talking about the Creator, God, who left his heavenly glory and willingly accepted to become the servant of servants to the extent of washing the dirty feet like each of us. As Bible students, we await for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We also know that the first coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was for many and various purposes. To name a few, one is to seek and to save that which was lost. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and also Mary and told of the heaven's arrangement that Jesus was becoming a, a human being, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, to save the sinners from their sins. But we also know that Jesus had come to this world 2,000 years ago to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk. In fact, he rose even the dead. That is to show that Christ had come to this world to destroy the works of the devil. But more importantly, my friends, Jesus had come to this world the first time 2,000 years ago to reveal the character of the Father. It was important for Jesus to do this because the devil had been doing everything possible to represent God, the Creator God, as one who is responsible for pain and suffering in this world. Ellen White writes, Satan represents God's law of love as a law of selfishness. He declares that it is impossible for us to obey its precepts. The fall of our first parents with all woe that is resulted. He charges upon the creator. The devil charges upon the creator, leading men to look upon God as the author of sin and suffering and death. Jesus was here to unveil this deception. In his life, yes, Jesus Christ revealed the character of the Father. And you know from the scripture, when Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father, Jesus said, you ask me to reveal the Father? He who has seen me has seen the Father. John 17, 6 and also 26, Jesus says to the Father in his prayer, I have revealed your name to the people that you have given to me. Your name, and that is the character of or the Father. In the little time that we have, my friends, this evening, as the pageant is waiting and people are waiting to depict the nativity scene once again, may I draw your attention to a wonderful passage in the scripture. And this passage is a parable that Christ himself has told. And this parable is to reveal the Father's glory, Father's character. And this is recorded for us in Luke, the 15th chapter, and this is the third parable in Luke 15. This is important um, that we examine uh, this story Jesus told because at least we have a couple of reasons. We are whatever we are because of the way we understand uh, the character of God. The way we speak, the way we think, the way we behave, all because of uh, the understanding that we have about our God, our daily life, our special occasions, our responsibilities, our resp relationships, our relationships, everything depends upon our understanding of the government of God. The second reason why we're examining this story tonight is because 
Self today is given more importance than the commission that Christ had given to humanity, that is to you and to me. And so this evening, even as we look at Jesus Christ and his birth in the nativity scene, we want to look at ourselves, where we stand in a relationship with God. So this is parable number three in Luke 15. And as we call this parable, the parable of the prodigal son. Since we know the story fairly well, I will not take time to narrate the story. But I want to still think about what is happening in this uh, very popular story, the story of a prodigal son. Why? The story and what is the demand that is made in the story? As we know, the younger son comes to the father and says, give the share of uh, the property. Give my share of the property. Why such a demand from the father? Was this young son not happy at home? Didn't he like the discipline maintained by the father at home? Was the standard and lifestyle of the home irrelevant to his life? Daily morning and evening worships and weekly Sabbath keeping, was it irrelevant for his life in his youth? Was his home full of restrictions and that he didn't experience freedom and that outside life was more attractive for him. Why such a demand? I want us to look at this home as the house that we belong to, the family of God. It appears to me this young man had funny, if you would like to say, ideas in his mind. If he were to speak what he was happening, what was happening in his mind, he would speak this way to the father. Dad, I've been waiting for a long time that you will change. But you don't seem to change. In fact, Dad, you're becoming worse. Anyway, Dad, I was also thinking that you would die. But you don't seem to die soon. The other time you fell down, I thought you were dying. But you recovered and now you seem stronger and healthier than before. Anyways, Dad, whether you die or not, that is up to you. But give my share. I will go and I will live my life. Again, a question that is coming to our mind tonight. What is our place in the relationship that we enjoy with God? Where are we? in our relationship with God. Five insights from this story, and I will close. As we said, this story, as Jesus told, reveals the character of the Father. And all that we do in this world depends upon our understanding of the character of God. And Jesus had come the first time to reveal the character of the Father. So the first insight that we see in this story is that a good God allows us to make choices. Father of the heavens allows us to make choices. Not only the good ones, he allows us to make even the wrong choices. Just because we make a wrong choice and that we live as if we didn't make any mistake, we need to understand from the scripture, from the story, that God in his infinite mercy and love, he, allow, he allows us to make even the wrong choices as well. The Bible is full of examples of uh, such instances. For example, Eve was allowed to make a wrong choice, to take the fruit from uh, that forbidden tree and eat Adam, Abraham, D Daniel, or even David for that matter, Peter, even when uh, Jesus Christ was on this planet he allowed people to make wrong choices. The Father of the heavens, whom Jesus Christ had come down to this world to reveal, allows us to make choices, even the wrong ones. The second insight that we find from this parable, which reveals the character of the Father, is that uh, a good God gives us what we ask Him, even those 
that are contrary to his will. God gives us what we ask him, even those which are contrary to his will. When the son approached the father and said, give my property, the son knew that the property would come to him after the death of his father. And he asked the father for his property even while the father was alive. In other words, to ask for the property from the father when the father was alive was to go against the family customs and the culture as well. God gives us what we ask him, even those contrary to his will. I'm sure you remember the experience of the children of Israel, the elders going to Samuel and asking for a king, a king that would rule the nation of Israel, a king like the other nations did. God didn't want to give a king to the children of Israel. God says a lot of things to Samuel that the children of Israel's lives will be miserable if they would have a king. But you know from the scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 8, Though God did not want to give king to the children of Israel because these elders wanted a king, God gave them anyways. God gives us what we ask him, even those that are contrary to his will. The third insight that I would like us to understand from this parable Jesus told revealing the character of the father is that God allows us to have experiences. God allows, to, allows us to have experiences, even the painful ones. God is love. He desires only the best for us. He wants us to enjoy life even in this sinful world. He delights when we are happy and yet when we make wrong choices. In his infinite mercy and love, he allows us to experience pain in this world. Yes, lots of stories, lots of experiences we have uh, in the Bible. Adam and Eve uh, had to come out of the Garden of Eden. God allowed them to, to experience pain. David, for the choice that he made uh, going, to, going into adultery with Bathsheba, God in his infinite mercy allowed David to experience pain. The son in this story, as he leaves home, he experiences pain. In fact, the Bible says he didn't have food to eat and he was ready to eat even what the swines were eating. God allows us to make, yes, to have experiences, even the painful ones. And the fourth insight that we learn from this story that Jesus told about Father's character is that God waits for our return even if our rebellion is extremely offensive to God. He waits for a return, even if a rebellion is extremely offensive to him. Father, if he was not healthy enough, his heart would have been broken. He would have had a heart attack and died when the son approached the father and said, give the share of my property. The son made the father very unhappy. It was offensive to the father when the son went and asked for his property. But the story says that the father was waiting for the son's return. Our father awaits for us even if our rebellion is extremely offensive to him. He is love, he is merciful, he is long suffering. He desires every person to be saved. He doesn't leave anything undone for our joy even in this world. It doesn't leave anything undone for our entrance to the heavens. And the last and not the least insight that we learn from this parable that Jesus told about the Father's character is that God rejoices at our return. God rejoices when we return even if accepting us is a further humiliation to him. As we look at this story, the father had to run seeing the son. The father runs and falls upon the neck of the son. The Bible says the father kisses him also. 
this old father had to run because he knew from the scripture that if anyone would see the son before he would enter the house the son would be stoned to death as so a father goes falls on the neck of the son and in fact covers the body of his son with his own body meaning if the stone should come onto the son the stones will actually come onto the father this is a kind of uh, father that jesus christ has revealed in his life in his ministry and also in the teachings that he gave us as recorded for us in the bible the question that is coming to us my friends even as we are awaiting to enjoy the christmas pageant where are we in our experience with god where are we are we at home are we at home with the family of god and yet not so happy the son was at home and yet not happy is it possible tonight that we are claiming to be the remnant of god and yet not so happy even in the house the family the church of god or are we away from home did we leave the church are we enjoying the pleasures of the world yes we do know that the pleasures of the world are temporal but are we, where are we again are we in the world enjoying the pleasures of the world just like this young man did in the story or are we experiencing pain no food no shelter no one to tap on his shoulder and say don't you worry i'm praying for you that was the experience of the son in uh, luke 15 the parable that jesus told how about us are we joyful that we are seventh day adventist christians are we sure that we belong to a community of faith that one day soon we'll see jesus christ in the clouds and spend eternity with him where are we my friends tonight is our life enjoyable and attractive to others to follow christ or are we ourselves experiencing famine and drought lack of uh, spiritual strength the good news is as the story says wherever we may be at home gone away from home or experiencing pain the good news is the father is still waiting for us with open arms is waiting for us to give us a new life is waiting for us to make us uh, powerful instruments in his hands is waiting for us to make our life new new in jesus christ is waiting for us it's my prayer tonight that we celebrate the sabbath even as we think about the christ's first coming to this world as the world celebrates christmas that somehow we will look at the man of christmas jesus christ the reason of the season and live a life of joy not for a day or two but every day and that i believe is celebrating christmas celebrating christmas every day god bless us tonight as we remain faithful to him and god bless us tonight as we allow god to bless others through us amen just by the family it's a humble privilege to present to you the christmas pageant entitled the new born king this is depicted on various stages around this building and now i would like to invite the uni the university choral to please come and the director miss mary devi
Christmas Eve worship times are special. What can we do? Uh, let's sing a carol together. Uh, how about singing Joy to the World? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven nature sing. I love Christmas. I love the Christmas tree, the lights, the candies, Santa Claus, and the gifts. But I've always wondered what the first Christmas would have been like. Daddy, can you tell us the Christmas story? Sure, son. But before I tell you the Christmas story, I must tell you just how it all began. Long before the birth of Jesus, God had promised Adam and Eve, soon after they sinned, that he would send his son to die for them. And ever since that time, people of all ages have been waiting and waiting, waiting for the greatest event that could ever happen in the history of the world. The coming of the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God.
into the story. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother was engaged to be married to Joseph. But even before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Daddy, you mean she had a baby through the Holy Spirit? How did that happen, Daddy? Yes, yes, Daddy. Tell us about that. Well, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a woman, and her name was Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, since I am not even married? The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. Mary, no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Inside the unexpected So we might know the love we go that far Yeah. 
Mummy, maybe you should continue the story from here. Then children, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Shalom, Elizabeth. Peace be upon you and upon Jerusalem. Ah, uh, uh, Mary, Shalom. Peace be upon you and upon Jerusalem. <sighs> blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for He has been mindful of the humble state of His servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. Daddy, tell us what Joseph decided. Ah, oh, I must tell you that. Now because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Why daddy? That is so sad. Go on daddy. What happened next? But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. What was that? Did I see an angel? God! That was you speaking to me. Now, I know that it's your purpose to have me marry Mary. I can't believe that. I'm going to be the earthly father of my Lord. My God, what an honor. Thank you, God. Thank you. Children, do you know what happened next? Joseph did exactly what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Wow, I like that. 
That is so sweet, Mummy. Now all these things happened to fulfill what the Lord had said through prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to their own towns to register. Sir, I am Joseph and this is my wife Mary. We are looking for a place to stay for the night. Martha, I told you, looks like we really need to put that signpost on our door. Sorry folks, the inn is filled to its capacity. Maybe you should try somewhere else.
What is it? You don't understand? There is absolutely no room in this inn. Ma'am, my wife is in pain. She's about to give birth to our child. Please, ma'am, any place will do. Just any place. Just any place? We do have a stable. That's about the only place I can think of. We'll take it. Please, please. Can we?
You know children, while they were that night in the stable, the time came for the baby Jesus to be born. Mary gave birth to her firstborn, wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Born in a stable and laid in a manger? God in a manger? Why, Daddy? Now that, dear, is a big question. The simple answer is that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to be one of us, poorest of the poor, to make us richest of the rich. Daddy, can you go on with the story? Tell us more, Daddy. Okay. In the meantime that night, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. What, what a sight! Oh my! This is not a dream, folks! God has spoken to us! Finally! Our prayers have been answered. Our wait has come to an end. Our long-awaited Messiah is finally here. Come on, let's let's go to Bethlehem. Yes, let's and go. See this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This is amazing. Let's go. Let's go immediately. Why are we waiting? Let's go. Let's go.
a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests so the shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger and when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart daddy the camels where do they come in yes daddy i love that part the wise men from the east right you mean the gold myrrh and frank and stein <laughs> you're almost right dear they are actually gold myrrh and frankincense let me tell you about that I believe even before baby Jesus was born certain wise men from the east saw a strange sight in the night it was a star rather something like a star in the sky
What is that? Did you see that? Look, is that a star? It looks so magical. That's right. It stands still in the heavens when all other stars sweep across the sky from dusk to dawn. That one star looks so different. That one star stands above the horizon, as if to say, come. It's incredible. It reminds me of the prophecies of old. I got it. It is indeed a fulfillment of the prophecy of Balaam. Look, here it is. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It surely is the star of the king. We must go and find out. Let's follow it. I'm sure it will lead us to the king, the long-awaited king. star until it stopped over the place where the child was. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Ah, 
Now I know where we got the idea of Christmas gifts. Daddy, do we really have to give gifts during Christmas? Well, dear, giving gifts to those you love is a kind gesture. But more importantly, God wants us to give our gifts to him. But Daddy, what gift can I give Jesus? Each Christmas should remind us of the greatest gift God gave to all the earth, the gift of His only begotten Son, who became a human, lived, died and rose again, so that you and I can one day be with Him forever. Then in return, He wants us to live with Him live like him and live for him this i believe is the greatest gift you can ever give back to god
This is the love of heaven Through all eternity Before the dawn of Eden He knew our deepest need The King of all compassion Giver of all grace Sent His Son from glory To an humble place Jesus is his name. Savior, Savior, oh, He has come. Savior, Savior, God has given us His Son. And He will bear our burden and take our shame. Savior, Savior. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God. But wait, maybe there's one more thing you could do for God. Now that you know the story of Christmas, the greatest story ever told, you can go and tell the world about it. About how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Daddy, why don't you sing for us a song? Yes, Daddy, please. Yes, I have just the song for you. It's called, Tell It on the Mountain.
after witnessing such a program i can only say thank you god for the plan of salvation in which jesus christ was the center the birth of jesus christ is going to be told to us by none other than jesus himself throughout eternity when we get to heaven may this christmas season ignite in us the spirit of christ like life rejuvenate our lives and rededicate our lives for the cause of god let's pray a holy righteous loving god we would like to thank you and praise you for this wonderful sabbath day we want to thank jesus the greatest gift of this world and as we have entered this christmas season o oh lord help us to understand that christ will be the greatest gift and the center of our lives anything without christ we know lord that we'll miss the point and so as we have seen the native scene the beautiful way that you took a human form to come and redeem us may this gift be always focused on our lives that will lead us spiritually and make us holy and we will be able to receive this gift in our hearts as we go from this place of worship fill us with your blessing and help us o lord that we will fellowship with you and practice all what is said in our lives in jesus holy name we pray amen